is mixed with uh, some, and I know Senator Ezen understands that we drink, uh, the, 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 uh, it is called Mursik Mala. They sometimes mix with a special tree. And, and people have been saying, you know, there was an argument with the speaker saying areas where people drink tea. You know, the other day we were separating international tea drinkers. No drinkers, International Tea Day. The temperature sometimes is too high, maybe it's causing throat cancer. So we need Cancer Institute to tell us why, for example, Kiambu, Nairobi, and Nakuru, where Senator, Deputy Majority Leader comes from, is leading in cancer. So that we don't create wrong perception. Why is it so the Cancer Institute must be given necessary resources to do the research? So that we understand why we are losing over, twin, over 27,000 Kenyans every year through cancer, Mr. Speaker. Why is it so? How do we ensure that we put place, Mr. Speaker? That is the Cancer Institute when you look under Section 31, Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, this is one of the technical, uh, technical, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, technical uh, subject. So we must put more resources to cancer. And I want to challenge, Mr. Speaker, National Assembly, as they appropriate budget for ministries. The reason, Mr. Speaker, and I want to say this passionately, the reason Senate today wants 415 billion to be added to counties, against 390 something that was proposed National Assembly, is to have enough resources to fight cancer in our, in our villages, Mr. Speaker. Our people are painfully suffering Yet out of 4.2 trillion Kenyan shillings, only we are requesting for 415 billion to go to counties to assist in the provision of health care in this republic. Mr. Speaker, I want to challenge, and I'm happy, I have seen a number of mediation committee members that they should not move an inch, but ensure that 415 billion is in place, Mr. Speaker. That is, that is what I, I wanted to move and ensure that we, we agree, Mr. Speaker, that as a Senate, the reason we are pushing more resources is to ensure that we, we put in place the necessary health, Mr. Speaker. With uh, very many remarks, and I want to say, I know I have one hour, I know I still have 30 minutes to go, but I want to, to end there and allow my colleagues, Mr. Speaker, to also uh, be able to contribute. This is, I expect all senators, and I'll be patient to listen, on the issue of cancer prevention, Mr. Speaker, the issue of cancer is a serious problem. When you go to Kisi, where Senator Gloria or Waba comes from, I can assure you Senator Gloria or Waba might be in 50 WhatsApp groups fundraising for cancer, pensions, or any other. So, Speaker, with those very many remarks, allow me to invite the Vice Chairperson of Senate Finance and Budget Committee and Nairobi Delegation, Senator Tabita Mutinda. I know there were many Tabitas, but the one and only Senator Tabita Mutinda to second. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senate, uh, yes. uh, what's your point of order, Gloria? Mr. Speaker, uh, and uh, standing order one, I just want to pass information, Mr. Speaker. This is a very important bill, and we probably are supporting it, Mr. Speaker, but we have highlighted the issue of, this, of our uh, order paper always prioritizing bills from the National Assembly when the senators who are sitting here have so many bills that are pending and that are being queued, Mr. Speaker. I have raised this issue with the Senate Business Committee and Mr. Speaker, it is very demoralizing that we come here as senators and we are just running business from National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. So even as we debate this and hence the reason why you can see the lethargy in the House, it is not that we don't support the content of the issue of the bill. It it is just that the senators in the House have got so much pending business. I know that uh, Senate, uh, our senator here, our Matangi, he, he's, he has had a motion that has been pending for over three weeks that has not even been put in the order paper, Mr. Speaker. So I just want to urge the Senate Business Committee to consider that this is the upper house, the Senate itself and the senators have got business that we would like prioritized, Mr. Speaker, on the order paper. Myself, this is Menstrual Hygiene Month. We are celebrating May 28th, Menstrual Hygiene Day, next week on Tuesday. My bill has been sitting in the National Assembly for one year, pending concurrence, Mr. Speaker. Yet in this house, 
We are prioritizing the National Assembly business, Mr. Speaker. I just want to put it out that it is not that we don't support this, but it is disappointing for members and, uh, and hence, even when we were, we were trying to tell Charagay to cut short his comments, it's because we, it, it is a bill that we would like to discuss after we have prioritized our bills in the Senate, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Senator uh, Gloria. I think uh, we have members from SPC here, Senator Tabitha uh, being majority leader and uh, that Senator Tabitha Mutinda being also in the SPC. So we will leave that matter to SPC and uh, they will provide uh, uh, information to the speaker who should give a grueling on your point of order, Senator Gloria. Thank you. Uh, before uh, this motion is second, I have a message from the chair. Honorable Senators, in the public gallery, we have 156 students and three teachers from Moy High School, Eldoret in Wasingishu County, who are undertaking an education visit in the Senate. Honorable Senators, in our usual tradition of receiving and welcoming visitors to Parliament, I extend a warm welcome to them and on behalf of the Senate and on my own behalf, wish them a fruitful visit. I thank you. Uh, senators, I will give an opportunity to two senators to welcome, um, to welcome the students. Uh, I will give uh, Senator Crystal Asige to welcome the senators because among the um, 156 students, there are several students who are um, um, people with a disability and uh, I think uh, uh, our very own VIP should be the person to um, give them a word of welcome. And I will also allow Senator Professor Margaret Kamar to also say one or two things to welcome the students. Senator Crystal Asige. Thank you very much, Speaker, for the opportunity to welcome um, the delegation from Moy High School um, here this afternoon. I, of course, understand what it is like to be a young student with dreams and ambitions moving forward. And of course, um, trips like these to Houses of Parliament like here in Nairobi are very important for you to be able to see um, a glimpse of what may be in your future if you decide uh, to become a leader in this country and represent your counties and your country at large. I also want Chair to give a special thanks and a special welcome to the students with disabilities who decided to also join the delegation and be a part of this very important experience in the Senate. Uh, to them who are here, our learners with disabilities, I am the senator in the uh, Senate that represents PWDs, women and youth, because I am all of those three things. I'm a PWD myself, visually impaired. I am a woman and I am a youth, just like some of you are. And I just wanted to inform them that I have several bills with you in mind specifically so that your futures can be ensured as inclusive and as equitable as possible so that um, you don't have to struggle like I had to struggle when I was a learner at your age in Mombasa County um, trying to, you know, fight discrimination and stereotypes and um, non-inclusive environments so that I can at least get an education and come to this place where I am today. I have the PWD bill, which I am sponsoring. I have the Learners with Disabilities bill, which I am sponsoring with my uh, colleague behind me, Senator Kamar, and um, the Kenya Sign Language bill as well that I'm sponsoring. And I hope you will be able to engage with those bills, even though they might be a little bit, um, uh, you know, complicated with their language, but your teachers will definitely support you in trying to understand what they will do for you in future once passed by the executive. So I thank you again. Uh, welcome to the Senate and remember, especially to the PWDs in the group that um, this mountain has been given to you so that you can show others that it can be moved. So feel encouraged and pursue education with everything that you have because you never know what is in the future. I thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Professor Kamar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to welcome the girls from Eldoret, Mr. Speaker, I am an older girl of Moy Girls Eldoret. 
I was in Moy Girls when it was Highlands. That was 1977-78, before their mothers were born. And I want to encourage them that the sky is not the limit when it comes to education. I want to congratulate them first for, achieve, uh, for getting the opportunity to go to that wonderful school. I have interacted with your teachers, and I know that uh, you are set for higher grounds. Moy girls, like the Highlands, which was before, has produced leaders, has produced professionals of all kinds. So you have the opportunity to be anything that you want to be because of the way uh, that school has been designed. You have a swimming pool for relaxation, but more than anything, you have wonderful houses. I was in circuit myself, and I want to encourage you to use every minute that you are in school. Girls from that school, Mr. Speaker, are girls who wake up and run. They don't just walk. They run when they're they, they don't lazy themselves, and I want to encourage them that any behavior that you calculate in high school follows you for the rest of your life. I am here as an example that when I got molded in high school, I became who I am. So I want to encourage you that uh, you can be anything. You can be a member of parliament like I was. You can be a senator like I am today. You can be a minister like I was. So you have everything. Those of us who are alumni of that school are proud, and we want to encourage you and your teachers to push on, and you have what it takes to be the best. Thank you for coming, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome them on behalf of my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Professor Kamar. Uh, Seconda, you can move. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and let me start uh, by putting myself on record that I do rise to second this uh, particular bill, the Council Preservation and Control Amendment uh, Bill that is being co-sponsored by Senator Cheryl Guy, yes, from the National Assembly. And before I proceed further, Mr. Speaker, let me acknowledge and uh, state that the sentiments that uh, uh, have been mentioned in terms of uh, prioritization of uh, Senate bills, I agree with it, it's very important. But it's also good to note, a case like yesterday, you as a speaker, you were seated on your seat there, and uh, with the help of those of the clerks here, you had to amend the order paper, uh, because almost three bills, if I remember correctly, had to be skipped because the owners were not present. And I think actually today, I've seen also you've stated before this house that uh, you have to amend, uh, rearrange, sorry, uh, the, the order paper. So I'd also want to urge uh, colleagues, in the event that uh, prioritization of uh, our bills uh, uh, on, uh, on the order paper, also let us make an effort to be able to ensure we remove them from the order paper by ensuring that we are on the floor and try to discuss them. I support the element that uh, Senate uh, bills should be prioritized, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, embarking on the, 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 the amendment that talks about the e-health uh, as far as the cancer prevention is concerned, Mr. Speaker, there are two keywords that uh, come aboard, that is prevention and control. Like a medical student, Mr. Speaker, I did my first practice, uh, medical industry was pharmacy. I have dispensed and I'm still in a position to continue disp uh, I mean, to dispense and prescribe and read a prescription, Mr. Speaker. I pride in having interacted with patients and having had the opportunity to be able to offer my medical services at that particular level. And when you talk about prevention and control, it's very, very key because at the dispensing uh, level of a, of a, of a um, prescription, it is at a point now that you're doing a treatment. But if a prevention had been done probably, probably earlier, then maybe 
we don't need, a patient does not need to get to the level of uh, uh, that particular treatment at that particular time. Focusing on the issue of the e-health, uh, it brings about the digital aspect. Mr. Speaker is a digital ambassador of ICDL in this country. I advocate for digital uh, services, uh, digital transformations, an ideology that uh, also the Kenya Kwanzaa government supports and it's in one of our priority manifestos. Through the CS uh, OALO in the Ministry of ICT, we've also been able to see quite a number of improvements of the digital services from about 300 government services to about over 15,000 government services on the e-platform, Mr. Speaker, which is a great stride and a great improvement. And so when you also it comes to the issue of the medical industry, it, it, it is also a very key aspect that uh, all hospitals should be able to adapt both public and both uh, and also private. Uh, it's a very important uh, technology at this particular time and era because you look at where we are. It is through our gadgets that we use, be it a laptop, be it the mobile phone, uh, uh, that really has enhanced quick responses, quick communication, and the speedy responses as far as use, use of these gadgets is concerned. And so what the, when it comes to this uh, particular amendment of e-health, then it plays a very key role when we acknowledge that the digital services or the digital gadgets that we have and use play a very key role. We can also not only use them to make uh, payments the way we see and make uh, money transactions. We have M-Pesa, which has really changed lives, both at personal level and at business level. M-Pesa has come and transformed the money industry. It's a paperless money uh, industry, Mr. Speaker, which has helped families, business people to be able to save a lot of time. Security when it comes to money matters, because you can be able to, you know, uh, uh, put your money in a digital uh, form and you are able to transact. So it is in this transformation, case, uh, with the case example of M-Pesa, then we should be able to uh, open up and allow for this change. And you know, Mr. Speaker, as a student of business, you know that uh, change comes with a lot of difficulty not only in organizations, but only also to individuals who before they believe that this can be done like this. You know, we've been uh, in a setup of, uh, uh, in a bigger percentage, believing that the traditional way of doing things is sort of the best way and having a feel that this is the only way to get the best results because uh, there is that mentality that you have to physically go and see a doctor so that you can feel that you've really uh, gotten the medical treatment that you deserve. But times have changed. The same way you don't really need to go to a bank and check your bank balance, but you you can use your phone with the many uh, digital platforms that we have on banking and be able to check your balance. You can be able to make bank transfers the same way you can be able to uh, liars and communicate to a doctor uh, and, um, or a medical uh, practitioner to be able to indicate uh, your illness and you can be able to get guidance actually on time. And this brings about the title of the bill which talks about prevention. Because then if you don't use the, the speedy uh, mode of technology, it might delay and bring about much more uh, issues uh, later, Mr. Speaker. And that is because you look at cancer. Cancer, Mr. Speaker, comes in different stages. There's stage one, there's stage two, stage three, and stage four, three and four, which are very, very uh, uh, critical and they're, uh, they're said to be the you know, the, the stages that uh, you're almost at your uh, final stages. But if you are able to uh, note the issue of cancer at an early stage, stage, then it becomes easier to be able to uh, get medication uh, at an early time. Or even if you've not really um, ha have the cancer cells, but at least you can be able to know, then how do I prevent, in the, in the event that you have symptoms that uh, are sort of leading or showing that this could be the case. And if it's not the case, then you're in a position to be well advised medically on how to prevent this particular uh, disease, Mr. Speaker. So it, in matters of um, technology and e-health, as far as uh, uh, technology of ICT is concerned, is very critical. And I want to urge that the education, uh, univers the, the universities, because mostly for you to be 
a fully pledged uh, medical practitioner, more so a doctor, you have to be a graduate from the recognized university uh, in this country or any other that is um, recognized worldwide as far as matters medical are concerned so that you can be able to be certified and be able to practice as a medical doctor. It's at this point with the discussion of the e-health, it's very important that doctors at this particular time not only concentrate with the theory part of it and the practical part of it, but also uh, start doing the studies of um, ICT. And uh, one of the easiest and uh, one of the things, of course, I champion is certification of ICDL. ICDL is an internationally recognized certificate that as you pursue your doctorate degree, you can be able to acquire. And this actually should be mandatory uh, uh, during the studies of medical studies, all sectors, be it you're doing even a lab technician, you're doing pharma uh, pharmacy, uh, nursing, uh, all that range, nutritionist, all that range within the medical industry, then uh, having certification of an, uh, uh, to be certified in, as an ICT knowledgeable person, both no, the knowledge and the practicability of it is very important, Mr. Speaker, because we cannot achieve e-health if then we do not have doctors or medical practitioners who do not even have, understand the basics of an ICT gadget, the basics of how to use the technology, the basics, Mr. Speaker, on how to use the different apps that are available, be it for, for, for logging in to be able to communicate with your doctor as far as um, a consultation is concerned, be it uh, be able, being able to access your prescription, being able to access a pharmaceutical uh, or a chemist to be able to be dispensed and get the same same drugs, Mr. Speaker. Let me state that also within the pharmaceutical sector, there comes also telesales. Mr. Speaker, telesales has been there. As I said, I've practiced pharmacy and uh, uh, business and transactions have been done through what we call telesales. So cell telesales has been, has been there, but what has not been there and really emphasized has been the e-health factor. Uh, telemedicine uh, factor, which plays a very key role, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, allow me to touch on the issue of uh, disbursement of funds by Treasury. I'm talking from the perspective of why, as a committee of finance, we came about and settled on the 415 billion, Mr. Speaker. As I said before, these are not just figures we just wake up as, uh, as, as finance team and uh, just put in place. They've been brought about by different factors. Factors that uh, range from the issue of the inflation costs, the commercial interest rates, Mr. Speaker, as well as the cost of the CHPs, the cost of the health, like you've seen, we've seen her doctors having, uh, I mean, been on strike uh, uh, from the different departments that they belong to, and you know very well health is devolved. So the justification of the Senate for the 415 is to ensure that the bigger chunk, because we are coming from 385, and the topper for the 415, one of the key areas that this committee, our committee was able to consider was because of this uh, uh, cost that are more medical. Look at the, the role that the CHPs are doing. They are able to go door to door. The government, through the Ministry of Health, has also equipped the CHPs in the different counties so that they are able to assist people at the lower level uh, so as to uh, um, uh, sort them and help them at an early time. Because I've always said, and I've always championed a healthy nation, a wealthy nation, Mr. Speaker. And looking at my studies back and uh, uh, remembering uh, the undergrad uh, that uh, most of us have done, and looking at the pastel factors that range from the political stability, the economic stability, the social, technological, legal aspect, and a conducive environment. There's nothing that stops this country, you know, being able to ensure that we have the e-health, putting in, in mind that the, the factors that have been able to state are all in place. Uh, they are all at a, at a well-placed position. There are no issues. Even from a social perspective, we are now socializing digitally. Uh, we are now using the digital uh, uh, technology to be able to do 
a lot. Even if it comes to uh, the Amazon tech, the, uh, uh, app to be able to make purchases, among many others, Mr. Speaker, what we've not really prioritized, and I'm backing it up, is the issue of the e-health service. Because all these other uh, things I've sorted, like for example, transport issues, we have the Uber sector that from where I'm sitting, I'm just able to uh, get my uh, transport from point A to point B because there's availability of the Uber, because the technology is in place. Uh, as I've said, the banking sector, I'm able to sit down and do my transaction. I can be able to pay for my goods from where I'm seated and many other across uh, uh, that as far as the technology is concerned. But as far as the health part is concerned, uh, we've really lagged behind, but this bill comes at a very good time because the e-health e factor is a very key and important factor, Mr. Speaker. I don't want to ignore the issue of the, e e uh, uh, the in attaches or interns that have been mentioned earlier. Interns play a key role. And uh, for us uh, as a country, with the education system that we have, it requires our students in the upper learning uh, level to undergo the theoretical uh, part of studies, and then also to have an opportunity to practice and to be able to understand how the industry works. I remember during my studies as a pharmacy student, by then, before I changed my career, Mr. Speaker, I had to do uh, internship, I had to do an attachment. Then without that, I could not qualify to be able to move to the final level, uh, to be able to graduate if I've not been able to do internship. So internship plays a key role. Uh, uh, so the matters of interns, the JSCC uh, team that I've had today, I mean, all these things should be just cons consolidated because then how do we have competent personnel? either from the legal uh, uh, sector, either from the medical sector, and any other sector, uh, if we do not allow them to be much more practical and be able to uh, perform by giving them opportunities, and those opportunities do not come free. They need to be uh, paid. I'm happy because Parliament has been fair. It gives young people an opportunity to be in terms, to, uh, uh, to have attachment in this institution of parliament. And I'm happy because parliament pays them. It is not free. There are institutions whereby you're just an attaché, but there's no single coin. It is still an expenditure to you. But uh, parliament uh, does uh, uh, remunerate the students, and uh, it's, it's, it's a good plus. So the same should be emulated to also our other people the lab technicians, the, the, the other students that are within uh, these industries. I'm, I'm seeing my time is up, Mr. Speaker. I, I seem to have a lot, but now I'll just uh, try and sum it up and say that uh, it is a, the high time we adapt. And I want to urge the mediation committee that had been set in place to defend the 415 for governors. We've seen National Assembly on matters of CDF, they ha they, their monies have actually been increased. The monies that we are asking for governors to be able to receive, most of these monies and most actually the bigger chunk of the additional fund that we gave is mostly going to the health sector, putting in mind that health is devolved. It is very sad, Mr. Speaker, to be entering into the premises of parliament and the ones you meet our young people our medics who play a very key role. There's no way you go to a hospital and you just see just directly the doctor. You have a channel, you have to do the lab tests, you have to do uh, different consultations before you get to the final part. So everyone within that industry plays a, a key role and most of these funds are to be able to take care of our, our people uh, at a lower level. Case example, the, the role that the CHP plays. So this uh, uh, money that we allocated as a committee should be taken seriously. Mr. Speaker, uh, during the COVID time, uh, it was a time that the effect of COVID was a worldwide effect, Mr. Speaker. And uh, we changed and adapted the technology of Zoom very fast. Uh, so an indication that we don't have really to wait when it's critical and then that's when we want to act. It is a high time we embrace and move away from the old formula of uh, still having to physically go see the doctor so that you can get uh, your, your medication and be able to be sorted, but we can use the technology. Mr. Speaker, I've had, I had uh, Senator Cheryl Guy talk about women uh, in terms of they are the ones who really 
have the highest percentage when it comes to taking care of their health. It is very true, Mr. Speaker. Men have really lagged behind when it comes to the issues of health because the rate of ignorance of even a, a, a small headache, uh, it's very high, Mr. Speaker. And I want uh, to say that uh, actually the, the higher rate of death today, it is more in men than in women. You know, women, we are so talented because we are multitaskers. We are able to do so many things. You could be having a headache. You're still running around in the house, taking care of the children. But we still do not forget to be able to take care of ourselves. And that's what brings about much of the difference. So, you know, we've said that women like uh, shouting and talking too much. It's what we run around with. And like men who are just focused on what item, but when it comes to their health, their rate of ignorance has been very high. And we want to urge male and men to prioritize because we need you uh, in this country. We need you for the role that you play and you continue playing. Uh, this um, technology will also be able to help our young children. Cancer had been known to uh, affect mostly the a bit elderly people, but nowadays, even young children is less than one year. Our young kids are getting uh, this particular uh, disease, but uh, the earlier we embark on these new technologies, then the better for us to be able to uh, have a healthy nation, a wealthy nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I do second. Honorable Senators, I propose the question that the Cancer Prevention and Control Amendment Number 2 Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 45 of 2022, be now read a second time. Honorable Senators, we will now debate, we'll allow debate, debate on this bill. Uh, Senator of Nyeri, Mamatinga. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. I rise to support. Mr. Speaker, sir, for those of us who've chosen to remain with our people after erection, one of the major issues that we've been fighting is contributions in aid of people seeking treatment, both within and outside our boundaries. Mr. Speaker, sir, indeed, it has become one of the major challenges socially because of the kind of facilities that we have in the country. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, such a proposal to have e-health application of artificial intelligence to not only collect data, but also use the same to work towards a prevention, early treatment, or a detection mechanism, it has come at the optimum time. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would want by starting to thank the President, His Excellency, William Samuel Ruto, for directing the members of the National Assembly to introduce internet hubs in all the wards across the country. This, Mr. Speaker, sir, will allow increment in the rate of IT literacy. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, sir, it is also a plus from the Kenya Kwanzaa government that they introduced the community health workers who have been equipped with kits to collect data. Mr. Speaker, sir, we know early detection of cancer can uh, save life. We know that when cancer detected at the early age, it is curable. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, we know that one of the sectors that have, have been affected by limitations of resources, Mr. Speaker, is lack of allocation in the health sector. Mr. Speaker, sir, almost in all 47 counties, there is a uniform cry about the standard of our health systems, our health facilities, and indeed, the improvement, the availability of uh, technology that will enable us to detect and to cure or treat uh, cancer. As a resource, Mr. Speaker, sir, we are conducting various fundraising to take our patients to India, South Africa, to those who can afford it to London and USA. It is a high time, Mr. Speaker, sir, as we move towards the Social Health Insurance Fund, that we ensure that health becomes affordable to every Kenyan. This cannot be done, Mr. Speaker, without the, uh, trying to create an interface 
without trying to create a leverage with the modern technology that's available across other uh, countries and across other uh, platforms. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, Sam, introduction of eHealth will give us an opportunity to be able to leverage the available technology, to, to leverage the available data related for, to family for those which are genetically um, uh, mod, uh, diseases that are in the families. Mr. Speaker, sir, allow me also to note that application of artificial intelligence in not only the health sector, but also in electricity, in water, will ensure that we do a most needed thing towards econ um, achieving economies of scale. It will also allow us, Mr. Speaker, sir, to share technologies across platform. It will also allow us, Mr. Speaker, to be able to use expert expertise that is available in other parts of the world. This, Mr. Speaker, sir, will ensure that our cost services, our health services becomes affordable and most important, Mr. Speaker, that we have the appropriate application of technology that will be geared towards improving the livelihood of Kenyans. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, it is also very, very important that we note health being a devolved function that we as senators continue fighting for the allocation of the 415 billion as proposed so that as we develop the platforms to be applied by the, the county governments and the, the national government, we can also allow easy data interchange between counties. Mr. Speaker, sir, we know most of the facilities, especially the referral uh, facilities, are used by different counties and different communities. Therefore, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Having easily accessible data about the patients who come to this hospital will ensure that they get the best services. And it has been reported, reported previously, Mr. Speaker, that people have been mis, uh, misdiagnosed. We know that even amputations have been conducted longly, Mr. Speaker, largely because of lack of information. Using a platform, Mr. Speaker, sir, there will and there is a possibility that you can use a doctor in India to conduct um, an operation using technology that's a, a, a used in UK. This, Mr. Speaker, sir, will ensure that we get maximum benefit of our health services while ensuring that the cost benefit is also um, uh, ascertained. Mr. Speaker, sir, we know that this country is one of the many countries in Africa that's suffering from uh, low technology. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, application of e-health will ensure that transferability, mobility, and indeed um, application of e-services through artificial intelligence will be enhanced, and therefore our people will enjoy more and more advanced services from our hospitals. Mr. Speaker, sir, we know that Kenya has produced some of the best doctors. Most of them, Mr. Speaker, they end up after their studies and work experience going to foreign countries to work there. This brain drain, Mr. Speaker, sir, can only be uh, stopped if we compensate them uh, appropriately, and that cannot happen, Mr. Speaker, sir, so long as we do not have the light technology that will ensure that our people get the light services. Mr. Speaker, sir, as I wind up so that I can give my colleagues also a chance to contribute, it is important to note that the success of devolution cannot be ascertained, cannot be uh, fulfilled, cannot be met unless we ensure that service and services in health delivery are efficient. Mr. Speaker, sir, we can leverage these from lessons learned and we do not need to rediscover the wheel. We know that most of the Western countries, especially India, have specialized in medical tourism. We can make Kenya a medical destination by ensuring that we have the right technologies and these can be leveraged by using artificial intelligence. I would want, Mr. Speaker, sir, as I sit down, to commend Jomo Kenya Kim, Kenyatta University Hospital, because in a short span of time, we've seen them apply and um, up, uh, employ technologies that have reduced the number of Kenyans seeking treatment abroad. What we need to do, Mr. Speaker, sir, we need now to bridge the gap between those people going there at stage three and four of the cancer and ensure that we get early discovery by ensuring that we have not only information from family tree, but we have also put, we put technologies in place so that we can ensure that testing is done at the appropriate time so that we can arrest cases that would otherwise be fatal. Mr. Speaker, sir, I think it is the duty of every senator to support this because 
uh, health being a devolved function, we know that it will ensure that we give better services to our people, and that being the case, save a lot of money in terms of money that we are paying in foreign hospitals by taking our patients down there and ensuring that the country also earns more resources by ensuring that we get the neighboring countries to come and enjoy, and enjoy health services that will apply the appropriate technology, and that is their future intelligence. Mr. Speaker, sir, I support. Senator Gloria Orwoba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would uh, like to support this bill, the Cancer Prevention and Control Bill from the National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, my, my submissions are from a, personal, um, from a personal experience, Mr. Speaker. In 2022, just uh, right before we were conducting party primaries, my father passed away from cancer, Mr. Speaker. And um, it was very shocking because just maybe four weeks before that we, is when we had gotten the right diagnosis of the cancer. Actually, just to be told that it was cancer, Mr. Speaker. Before that, we had gone to different, uh, because it was, uh, you know, he was diabetic, he had, um, you know, and also he was uh, an elderly citizen. So he, we had gone to many hospitals just to get the right diagnosis, Mr. Speaker. And eventually when we were told that it's cancer, but they were not quite sure which cancer, and so they wanted his body to, you know, we were told you need to put him on a diet so that he can be able to gain back the strength so that he can um, be able, so that when they do the, the proper diagnosis, they'd be able to know which particular cancer it was, Mr. Speaker. But we didn't even get to that point because I think three and a half or four weeks after the diagnosis, um, it was a time when also there was COVID and, you know, the, the, at that time, we're not quite sure. If you'd get sick, they would say, okay, maybe it's COVID before we are sure and you isolate. So there was that period. And Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, when we were trying to get to the bottom of which cancer or how we were going to approach the, the, um, the treatment, he passed on, Mr. Speaker. But two things were very clear to begin with. One, even to get the proper diagnosis in Kenya of which cancer, it, it takes... So it takes a lot of uh, consultations, many appointments, waiting uh, lines. If you go to Kenyatta National Hospital, if you go to Coptic, the private ones, the level fours, level fives, level six, you know, it, just to get the right diagnosis is the first problem, um, Mr. Speaker. And when I was looking at this uh, cancer prevention control bill, my first thought was perhaps even the data that we are pushing to have digital devices and digital approach on how we are looking at the uh, healthcare system and cancer in particular. The data also should be able to tell you, and perhaps this is an amendment that they should add, they should have specific data to show you that this institution or this uh, medical center is actually a specialist in ABCD kind of cancer, Mr. Speaker. That way, you are not also moving from one uh, hospital to another hospital, trying to figure out what is right. The data, the, the truth is in the data. There are certain uh, um, healthcare providers who are actually specializing in certain cancers, and that would be also um, an added advantage to be able to know through the data that in the event that there is um, that, that, the, that the doctor suspects that it could be a certain type of cancer, whether blood or what, then they can be able to say, based on the data that we have had in the past and the treatments and the early diagnosis, maybe you should go to this particular hospital to get your proper diagnosis, Mr. Speaker. So one of the reasons I support this is also, until up until now in 2024, we actually don't seem to have a centralized point of data, a true source of data where you can go in and, and as an end user, as a Kenyan, you can actually see that in the event that unfortunately I'm suffering from this particular kind of disease, this hospital has specialists in ABCD, Mr. Speaker. And I think the introduction of e-health and digital systems and platforms which are easily accessible by Kenyans can help cure that particular issue of how to ensure that you get your early diagnosis without 
having to travel from different cities or, you know, just uh, relying on information by well-wishers or, you know, people who just don't have the data that is required, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, as I said, this is very personal to me because up till today, as a family, we are still trying to figure out is there anything that we could have done that probably would have helped that particular situation. And I don't think that um, any family member who has lost a family member through cancer ever gets closure in terms of is there anything else they could have done, Mr. Speaker. We only talk about early diagnosis and early treatment. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes when you have your diagnosis and it's not early diagnosis, sometimes they tell you you're in stage four. And uh, maybe they say, you, you know, you have uh, a week or two weeks to live, Mr. Speaker. Does that mean that then the dignity of Kenyans should not be looked into the management of that cancer? The management of, let's say, um, your final days, so to speak, Mr. Speaker. These are also some of the conversations that I know as Africans we shy away from talking about. But as we're looking at all this... Um, very exciting opportunities to revolutionize our healthcare sector by digitizing, you know, the platforms and things. We should also remember that cancer is a reality. We have cancer survivors. We have uh, people who are living with cancer for many years. And so the issue of managing the symptoms or whichever um, state or situation that you should also be factored in, in such, in, in such a way that um, when the data is being collected or when the data or the platforms is being given, it should also offer that opportunity so that you can understand that if in the event, because some people also choose not to go for treatment, is there a, an option to go to a specific healthcare facility to actually get, you know, quality of life as you, you know, prepare to go to meet your, 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 your maker, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on this cancer prevention and control bill, uh, I know we are talking about um, how to ensure that Kenyans have that direct access through the digital platforms, Mr. Speaker. But I cannot uh, highlight, um, I, I, I have to highlight the fact that our community health promoters, who, as you know, the Kenya Kwanzaa government has actually facilitated and um, empowered with digital devices with, which have specific applications where they can actually be able to manage the communities. You know, every community health promoter gets about, I think, 20 uh, families that they are dealing with. And they are able to do, you know, routine calls. They are able to, even without them being called by that specific uh, family or, or member uh, who's on that platform, they're able to just go and check up and say, okay, you know, today we have, um, we, you know, we're doing high blood pressure tests and things like that. I think this cancer prevention and control bill, as they're highlighting the e-health and the digital platforms, they should also remember that we have an existing app under our community health promoters that can actually benefit immensely from whatever proposal is here. So it's about synergizing, not creating new platforms and then having to move people from one place to another, but about synergizing with the existing um, platforms that are there, and that includes the community health promoters. Mr. Speaker, in 2024, and especially in Kenya, for those of us who have lived abroad, we know the advantage of being in this country, Mr. Speaker, that's why we came back. One of the advantages is that Kenya is actually very, very advanced in terms of e-commerce, Mr. Speaker. It is probably only in Kenya where you can order anything online that can be delivered to your house, Mr. Speaker. I know many people don't know this, but most of these platforms and e-commerce um, activities that we have the privilege to access do not even exist in countries like Denmark and Sweden, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in 2024, Kenya is probably one of the first countries in Africa where you can go on a platform such as MyDawa and order for painkillers or whatever other, uh, um, you know, uh, medicines that you would like to have, Mr. Speaker. This is something that we don't celebrate enough. In fact, to an extent that when we are talking about the Cancer Prevention and Control Bill and in terms of telemedicine, Mr. Speaker, I doubt that many people are aware that telemedicine is actually already 
happening. It's, it's just that maybe we have not regularized it, we have not put a legal framework, but we have platforms such as Uber, which have so many pharmacies that are listed on, and not only that, in other platforms they even have doctors who are giving WhatsApp services in terms of um, not really diagnosis, but um, if you are seeking some consultation on, on a, maybe a long-term illness or management of, you know, um, situations such as diabetes and things like that. So, Mr. Speaker, even as we are talking about this, maybe what we need to streamline is how will we bring all these digital platforms and e-health systems and telemedicine proposals into one um, regulatory authority, Mr. Speaker, because that's what's lacking. Today, if you order medicines from an online platform and by, you know, unfortunately they are probably expired or they are not, you know, approved by cabs, you don't know where to start because the platform is legal, but you don't know who to hold accountable in a situation like that, Mr. Speaker. So I hope that part of the amendments that could come here is also to ensure how do we safeguard the lives of Kenyans as we are trying to move to digital platforms and all these advanced systems such as AI and, 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 and all these advanced, you know, digital world, um, let me say proposals, Mr. Speaker, because at the end of the day, um, I think we as legislators have the duty of care to ensure that we are introducing laws or amendments that will not turn around and actually be very harmful to Kenyans that are out there, Mr. Speaker. However, having said that, I, I support this bill. Um, and uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want to highlight, and maybe for purposes of the Ministry of Health, there is a very big problem in terms of the cues that we have in our public hospitals uh, on the issue of cancer treatment and diagnosis, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, as, as I speak now, I, and I, I think that's why Senator Cherarge probably highlighted, I am dealing with a family who is trying to take their father to a hospital. He needs medi like urgent medical care in terms of cancer treatment because he's on stage four. And all the hospitals, the public hospitals that he goes to, they are all stating that, oh, this, this hospital has a six-month waiting. Kenyatta National Hospital, in terms of the specific treatment that needs, has up to two-year waiting for you to be taken in, Mr. Speaker. And so when you look at the, even the waiting lines, for if someone is telling you that you have been diagnosed with stage four cancer, and for you to get the immediate treatment, you have to wait two years if you have to go to Kenyatta National Hospital, for instance. And then when we, we tried to get the option of a, a private hospital, Mr. Speaker, because uh, the, the gentleman is actually insured under NHIF, Mr. Speaker, we got a clear written feedback that yes, you can come for treatment, it can start immediately, but we do not accept NHIF, Mr. Speaker. And we do not accept uh, certain, um, all these proposed um, insurance, uh, uh, medical covers from government, Mr. Speaker. So maybe I want to highlight that, and, and to the Ministry of, of Health, particularly to our Cabinet Secretary, we have to be intentional on how we are dealing with this wait times in our public institution for cancer treatment. And Mr. Speaker, I don't know whether it's too much to ask, but I even think that a special working group should be put together to see how we can, we can um, either solve through maybe even subsidizing for some of those people to go to private hospitals just so that we can reduce the wait time. But I don't think that it sits well that we can we are, in, we are legislators, we are leaders, and we are okay with, with knowing that Kenyatta National Hospital, the waiting time for anyone who's coming in for any cancer treatment is two years, for instance, Mr. Speaker. We look, we always have like uh, ad hoc committees and special committees to deal with pending bills, to deal with Kenya Airways, Mr. Speaker. But I think we actually need a committee that needs to sit down with the Ministry of Health to deal with how we are going to cut down all that waiting time and the long queues of cancer patients who are waiting to be treated in public hospitals, Mr. Speaker. I think, and maybe, and I know that the proper way would be to now bring a statement or maybe I'll, I'll find another channel, but it's something that we need to highlight. It's been going on for years and years and nobody is actually doing anything about it, Mr. Speaker. Having said that, I want to say that I support 
this cancer prevention and control bill. And I do hope that um, this will be the beginning of the end of all the, the frustration that Kenyans are having to go through just to deal with cancer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Mungatana. So, Speaker, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to make my contribution to this bill. Mr. Speaker, th this is not the primary bill on cancer prevention and control, but this is an amendment bill. And Mr. Speaker, it is an amendment bill because when they passed the initial legislation to set up the Cancer Institute, one of the things they left out is the question of e-health, Mr. Speaker. The question of telemedicine was left out. So, Mr. Speaker, the primary purpose of this bill really is to amend Section 5 of the parent bill. And that Section 5 was set up. But in reality, this amendment would make sure that the National Cancer Institute and its functions would be expanded so that it would include the promotion and use of e-health and telemedicine for the prevention and management of cancer. It would include the promotion the, and management of persons with cancer as a component of primary health care. And it would secure and regulate the use of e-health in cancer management and the provision of cancer diagnosis, treatment and rehabilitation services and other medical care related to cancer. So, Mr. Speaker, the actual purpose of this amendment is to support the primary uh, uh, cancer, uh, the cancer law that had already been passed and had not taken care of the use of e-health. Mr. Speaker, every time we hear about cancer, and from my own experience, I would want to state clearly that I would support anybody and anything that would say we're going to fight cancer. Because, Mr. Speaker, cancer took away one of the most important people in my life. Mr. Speaker, when I lost my father, it was a very tough situation for me because I grew up watching this old man and he was there for us, he was there for me. And uh, in many ways I failed to live to his expectation, but Mr. Speaker, that man influenced my life in a way that I would do anything to help him be comfortable. And Mr. Speaker, I didn't know he was suffering from cancer because um, it's sort of my younger brother, who is a doctor, knew the actual facts, but he decided to, for his own good reason, to sort of keep it away from us. So f for those of us who are not very um, learned in these matters of medicine, we didn't know. But I remember my father was in pain and he graduated from using painkillers that were small until he started using very strong painkillers. And still, he was this kind of total African man who would not say what and he would not show any weakness. But, um, and all my life, I never saw him sick, you know. But one day, I heard my father make his normal prayer. He, was, he used to wake up and pray at exactly 5.10. 
and he would pray and pray and pray for everyone. But in this particular day, I heard him pray and he said, Lord, if it is possible, take this pain away from me, let me rest. And um, I realized we were in the final stages of spending the, the time that we had with this old man. My father left us when he was 72. And it was a very painful experience for all of us in the family because we, we really were close to him. So anything to do with fighting this burden of cancer, Mr. Speaker, I would be the first person to support this. And Mr. Speaker, the burden of cancer in this country is a great burden, Mr. Speaker. When you look at the status report of 2023 in Kenya, they say that there are five types of cancers that bear 48% of the burden of the cancer disease in Kenya. Mr. Speaker, the first one is a breast cancer, there's cervical cancer, there's prostate cancer, there's esophagus cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma type of cancer. These five types, they are the ones that take 48% of the burden of cancer according to the status report of 2022-2023. So, Mr. Speaker, if you look at breast cancer, for example, and we have heard here that when it reaches stage four, there's really very little that you can do, just like most other cancers. But if we have e-health, if we have telemedicine, Mr. Speaker, it is possible to educate people, to let people know what can be done at the stage that it is still curable. So, Mr. Speaker, like breast cancer, if we have enough e-health interventions at the family level, at the health promoters level, if we have enough information trickling down to that very level, Mr. Speaker, people would know that they have to check themselves, for example, they would have for those who have husbands to check for anything that is abnormal so that, Mr. Speaker, it becomes preventable, it becomes treatable, it becomes detected at a stage where it can be dealt with. Mr. Speaker, prostate cancer, if you have e-health information, if you have telemedicine reaching to places and interventions in that area, in that space, reaching to people in places where maybe even uh, doctors don't go normally. Mr. Speaker, it is possible to deal with prostate cancer at an early stage and treat it. Mr. Speaker, I believe this amendment is very good for us and it is helping us take this fight to where cancer is. Information is power, Mr. Speaker, and we need this information. Mr. Speaker, every time you use information to reach people, when people have information, they are able to then deal with the situations. Mr. Speaker, e-health gives us certain interventions, whether you are already going through treatments, whether you're going, you, you are at the stage of preventing or preventive medicine, e-health gives us interventions that can be very useful and life-saving. For example, Mr. Speaker, if you have gone for your normal checkup and e-health is there to give you reminders to your phone, Mr. Speaker, on, over your WhatsApp, over your text messages, over your email, that uh, there is this reminder, you need to do certain things. 
then Mr. Speaker, e-health has become your lifesaver because some of these things, if you, you have reminders, they can come in to assist you. Mr. Speaker, there is sometimes online support, direct online support from some of these applications. The previous senator has just told us how various applications that exist in Kenya are able to support treatment or even diagnosis or early interventions through e-health, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thirdly, you would find that um, within the space of e-health, there are a lot of um, web-based technology and information that one can actually go and start reading on these matters. And this information is all there. The only problem is that most Kenyans, and I, I, I believe most people, they would not be bothered about anything to do, say, with heart attack or potential for heart attack until a family member, the wife, a child or somebody suffers from those. That's when everybody goes to read. Everybody goes to take um, a, a web information, internet information. Nobody really bothers about uh, uh, that information unless it is directly affecting them, Mr. Speaker. But when we have these uh, e-health interventions, and people have become so, so techno nowadays, Mr. Speaker, they, the people are even able to count the steps they have taken in the course of the day. People are able to, to, to do the, the, the amount of calories they have burnt in the course of the day. People are able to, to, to work out. So, Within that space, if e-health is promoted as this bill, uh, this amendment proposes, Mr. Speaker, we will be able to have the information coming to us where we are, even where we are seated here debating, Mr. Speaker, or somebody teaching in a classroom at the university, or teaching at the primary school, or even himself treating somebody else, some prompting can come to your own phone, Mr. Speaker, to tell you now it's time, you need to, to go and do this and that for the sake of your own health, Mr. Speaker. So this bill ought to be supported by the Senate. And it, it should be given all the support so that we can promote e-health, we can promote e-medicine. Mr. Speaker, before COVID-19 came, we never used to think uh, beyond the traditional methods of treatment. If you are feeling unwell, you would want to go to the doctor. But when COVID came, we realized that in fact, it is possible to treat yourself by just uh, logging into a doctor or actually having a virtual appointment with your doctor. And you don't have to go to him or to her. They can actually give you directions from where you are on how to treat yourself. And Mr. Speaker, it is something that has uh, saved a lot of lives. And it takes time, but eventually we will get there, Mr. Speaker. I know that um, even here in Nairobi, there are many people who haven't quite gotten into that telemedicine. But Mr. Speaker, we will get there. I know that um, people would take, even in rural setups, like in my county, they would take those uh, images at, uh, for x-rays when they were working. Uh, nowadays they are not really uh, working, but when they used to work, they would take those images and ask somebody to read those images. So you, you don't have to travel all the way to get an interpretation of the x-ray image. And Mr. Speaker, appropriate treatment is given, uh, even from a very far, far off place. Mr. Speaker, for those of us who are practitioners of the law, you would remember very well, because you, you are also one of us, Mr. Speaker, that there was a time if you have a court case 
in Mombasa or in Kisumu, you are not able to take the brief in Garissa, very maybe a, a, a golden brief, a well-paying one. You are not able to combine those briefs because you had to travel there physically to go and attend to court. But Mr. Speaker, nowadays, uh, you can be here in Nairobi and you are doing, uh, you are addressing a judge who is seated in Mylindi at the Court of Appeal. And you, you finish your case and you can also uh, be addressing a judge in the High Court in Kisumu or the High Court in Nakuru because of intervention of internet. So, Mr. Speaker, in the same manner, it took a long time, like those old guys like ourselves, who are used to physical court and still believed that really there's no real court and until you go there yourself in person. Uh, it took some time, but we adjusted. So, the encouragement here is that even Kenyans, even Kenyans, it may take some time on this telemedicine, it may take some time on these concepts of e-health, especially in fighting scourges or these animals, uh, big animals uh, and big scourges like cancer. It may take some time, but we will get there because a few people will adapt, especially the younger ones. Then it will grow, it will grow, it will grow, and then finally it will be normal for us to obtain treatment, for us to do consultancies, uh, over the phone, uh, for us to depend on our phones for the necessary uh, promptings for the sake of our own uh, good health and well-being. So, Mr. Speaker, we have a lot of reason to uh, say that this amendment is a good amendment, and any person who will be speaking to it, I, I urge that um, they support this amendment so that we can uh, have a better way of fighting cancer. Mr. Speaker, we especially who are coming from the rural uh, counties, you find that specialists, for them to travel all the way to Hola, all the way to Madogo, all the way to Garrison, is a very expensive affair. But a specialist sitting in Nairobi can actually advise a doctor to interpret a situation in whole referral and be able to administer treatment. And those are the, the, the benefits of this uh, telemedicine and e-health that we are trying to support in this bill. And Mr. Speaker, very many cancer patients, we believe, going into the future will benefit from this legislation. And they will not have to be uh, paying so much as, as, uh, as it is today, to have to travel all the way from the rural areas to come for diagnosis, to come for specialist advice in, 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 in the places where they are located, like in Mombasa or in, the, in Nairobi County. So Mr. Speaker, I believe with all my heart that this is a bill and we should uh, support it and I pray that every person who would speak to it would support. So, Mr. Speaker, I beg to support this amendment. I thank you. Thank you, Senator Mungatana. I now call upon Senator Kibwana Hamida. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think uh, Senator Mungatana has taken all my words. Uh, but much has been said, Mr. Speaker, on this. And I remember, I'm not, anyway, I, I've been the crafter of the e-health bill. And when you talk about e-health, of course, I was looking at the same. So I had already focused on the telemedicine and, and uh, uh, e-health in general. And uh, I had gone for another meeting, uh, Mr. Speaker, but then uh, when I realized that the, uh, this issue, the cancer prevention and control is being discussed. I said, I must chip in because it's, it has been uh, very dear to me, me being in the health uh, committee, I brought up uh, these issues. I've lost uh, many members of my family um, out of uh, cancer. 
Mr. Speaker, early screening uh, of cancer uh, should be um, should be sensitized. Uh, cancer, cancer is largely uh, a disease that is inherited. So um, looking at mapping out of families early enough uh, will prevent this. Um, we have the geno genomics lab that is near uh, Kenyatta Hospital. Most people don't make use of it. And also Kenyatta Cancer Center. Uh, we have it, and, and I guess they can do early screening. So if you go deeper into a family history, um, early enough, it will knock out the early stages of cancer, Mr. Speaker. Young people are dying of cancer, Mr. Speaker. The other day, I lost my nephew, who was only 30 years old. He had just gotten married. He was uh, eight months uh, before his death, unfortunately, and he didn't even have any children. It was really, really sad to see him go through the pain. You can't believe, Mr. Speaker, his pain only lasted for eight months. That's when we knew that he had cancer. And uh, he passed on, you know, without us getting to understand better where, when the pain started and how it progressed to his death. Mr. Speaker, there's something called this... Uh, uh, something called Lee from many syndrome. I just, I learned about it. And I hear this one predisposes people to multiple cancer. A hundred percent, once you get it, uh, for women, it's a hundred percent that it's a death sentence. And for men, it's 75 percent. So you can imagine. But then with this one, most, it's not known to many doctors, Mr. Speaker. So you find, even in this country, we don't have no policy, no screening protocol on Lee uh, from many uh, syndrome. Such kind of syn syndromes, uh, Mr. Speaker, could be the reason why the, we are seeing the high rate uh, of, of cancer. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I remember uh, there was a documentary, uh, was it Meru? they tried to do some research on Meru, and whereas they found many men were dying out of um, throat cancer. Now, this one, uh, I guess, in fact, what they were trying to get, I think what the, the researchers got is that there were chemicals that were being sprayed on the mirror. So when they're, you know, plucking out the mirror, they're chewing at the same time. So no cleaning, no nothing of mirror. So you found, you know, a whole area of uh, in that sector, uh, many men were dying, and all of them were diagnosed with uh, throat cancer. Um, then nowadays, you even find the chemicals that we use on the hair also does have cancer. I mean, it's 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 uh, um, it's a trigger for cancer. And there are many other things. Using sugar, Mr. Speaker, white, uh, you know, flour, and many other kind of, you know, eating habits that we have, they all trigger um, cancer, Mr. Speaker. So what I'm saying is that our young people, we need to have these testing kits anytime, uh, and the, the the government should invest uh, and 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 build capacity on genomic equipment. And actually, the footprint is quite big since there's no uh, need of bringing new equipment. Mr. Speaker, the country invested so much uh, uh, during COVID on genomics. We did. And so these systems are there. And so we only have to use them. So it's only buying the cancer screening kits and training, capacity training that is required, Mr. Speaker, um, for, for cancer. Mr. Speaker, the rapid, I hear there's the rapid diagnostic kits that have come now, but then they're, they're still on test. So I really want to urge the government also to invest on this one. So you really don't have to go out of your way, uh, you know, to, to go to hospitals and all that, yet you have, you know, the rapid diagnostic kit. 
I want to believe it's just like when you want to test, uh, the preg like the pregnancy test and the COVID test that we had. You could just use them and get to understand, you know, where you are. Um, the, the instruments, uh, Mr. Speaker, that we have in the country, we should use the biomedical uh, and uh, biomedical engineers uh, to operationalize, to install, and to train um, uh, to train people on uh, Kenyans. Um, and this actually, it will go across the country. I'm sure we'll achieve uh, our goal because the instruments or maybe the equipments are there, but then we don't have, you know, um, we, the equipments are not being serviced. So we can use this people called the biomedical engineers to actually train, to install them. And so the, the, the instruments can function all over across the country, then we can achieve. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we now need to invest in doctors again. I'll speak again on genomic testing just to become the national algori algorithm for, for early screening. Seriously, uh, now, I, someone told me the second uh, killer in Kenya, it's cancer, the second or third, it's cancer. So we are not even going out, you're not looking maybe so much about HIV or anything, imagine it's, it's all about cancer. The food that we eat, um, the, our young people, you know what they're exposed of. Even when you're told now, even when you don't have enough, uh, <clears throat> uh, when you don't get enough sleep, then you're bound uh, to, to, to get cancer. When you're any kind of, actually even the eating habits, so you only have to, we only have to go to our traditional food again, uh, so as, you know, uh, not to, to avoid such. Now, there's also precision medicine. Uh, the precision medicine, uh, Mr. Speaker, generally, uh, it identifies the specific drug target that uh, once we have the genomic map of the country, so this will help uh, uh, in terms of precision medicine. Um, this precision uh, medicine, Mr. Speaker, it targets, you know, specific drug target and exactly um, and it will uh, lead the doctor to exactly what uh, the doctor uh, wants to test or wants to um, diagnose. Uh, then we have, uh, actually, Mr. Speaker, looking at uh, the, the economy, it's being, the, 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 the economy, I mean, looking at the age of 28 to 51, they're the ones who, are, who drive the economy. And the, the young ones are also dying. You know, 20% of young people are, are you know, also dying. I, Mr. Speaker, most of the time when Kenyans were rushing to India, we were all going for the PET scan. Now, it's also unfortunate that it's only Naga Khan Hospital and KUTRH that those are the only two PET scans we have in the country. It is painful, it is sad, with this time and, uh, and era. I'm wondering what the government uh, is doing about it, because I, I, I don't understand why. And I remember most of our people were dying because we could not, we had to go to India now to, to, to do the PET scan for you to test. One of my brothers, Mr. Speaker, he was, he was almost 40 years. He started having a back pain, just back pain. And so it became severe. So when you, when you took him to hospital, just back pain. Imagine you was told he, he had cancer. And uh, um, then they said, ah, I think it's only stage one, but then you need to get uh, you know, uh, treatment as soon as possible. So we decided, no, let's take him to India. And it didn't take three weeks. You can't believe by the time we were getting to India, they said, look, after doing the PET scan, he had stage four cancer and he, he passed on. So I, I feel sad that Kenya is still lagging behind on this, on, this, on, on this issue, you know, of cancer. And now that it's the one, me, I should say, in fact, I, I feel strongly that it's number one killer disease. Because, you know, cancer, you don't go through pain. 
when you get cancer only after it has advanced, then you feel the pain. So you can imagine. So if you don't have these kits, how would you know? My, 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 my nephew died within eight months and his was fully blown. How did he get it? He wasn't in pain. You know, my, my brother was the same. So I feel uh, strongly. Um, this, of course, it's, and you know, uh, Mr. Speaker, cancer is generic. Um, that's why I'm saying we, you really need to have to get into f family history and, 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 and understand, you know, um, the issues. So once you know that at least the family history has that. Mr. Speaker, in, in UAE, every two years, you are bound to have, it's, it's, I think it's, it's um, the government has put it as policy that you have to go through colonoscopy and endoscopy. Now, once you go through that, then there's every, um, at least the tests, you know, will bring you, I mean, it is so clear whether you have it or not. The prostate cancer now, Mr. Speaker, it's the same. So this telemedicine and e-medicine actually uh, will, will prevent uh, and maybe a control uh, once, once we have it in place. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I'll finish by saying the country, the government has to invest on this, Mr. Speaker. Just the way we invested on COVID, <clears throat> then uh, the, the cancer has to be invested on. Uh, we are losing lives, we are losing our children, we are losing our young ones nowadays, but instead of, you know, parents uh, being buried, I mean, it's, it's parents who are burying their own children, maybe through the same cancer and the rest. It's quite painful. Um, I say it again, 60, between 16 and 50 years, looking at the da data, uh, have 51% of these cases, yet the most active stage in life and has a direct you know, economic impact. Mr. Speaker, I urge again, and I really support uh, these amendments, that uh, there's every need that we may have that uh, uh, Cancer Prevention Control Act and the uh, amendments in, um, on, on uh, telemedicine and, and and regulate the use of e-health. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I did this. I had, of course, my own e-health bill, which, was, which has been, until now, uh, taken by the government. I take pride on this one. And, of course, uh, I, I have decided it will not, of course, move without putting a fight on amendments because I realize such amendments are not there on the e-health, which is now the so-called digital health bill. Mr. Speaker, I support this amendment and I thank you for giving me this time. Thank you, Senator Hamida. Now I call Senator Keroche. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I also rise to support the, this uh, bill, the Cancer Prevention and Control Amendment. Uh, let's say prevention is better than cure, and I think this is one of the best bills that we've had, and uh, we should all support it, because we know all of us have suffered, as uh, Chirangai put it here. If it's not uh, you, maybe a member of your family, maybe your neighbor, or a friend. So it is something that is uh, everywhere, and. Uh, it is a disease that uh, keeps on rising, and I think it's because of that lack of uh, prevention and control. And if everybody did the right thing, how things need to be done, I think we can achieve what we are looking for. The government uh, should put it a priority to ensure that whatever Kenyans are eating, it is, uh, meets the standard that is required be it uh, drinking or eating the food. Uh, I was surprised to see the other day about the maize, the aflatoxin. And uh, this is just maize that we can dry it uh, well, but you'll realize that uh, because of, uh, maybe we need this ugali quickly, so people just go take that maize 
And they know very well when they are taken to the market, it was not done, it was not dried the right way. Then it's taken to the Kenya Bureau. The Kenya Bureau, you see the aflatoxin maybe is high, but it's still easy to the market. So this is, uh, I think, one of the things that the government need to take priority to ensure that whatever their Kenyan people eat meets the right standard. And uh, the medicines that are put in their shelves, they also meet the standard. The pesticides that are used to, to, I mean, to pesticide our, our food, the same. They are used by our farmers. Even the, the pesticides that we use to kill the insects and all that in our homes, the same. But it must meet the standard that uh, are set internationally. And uh, as uh, Senator Amida puts it, the early diagnostic in every county, I think we should have those machines put in uh, the level five hospitals and level four to ensure that it's part of part of uh, the day-to-day -day, lifestyle of our people, that they are, they are made to understand that they need to do early diagnostic. Even if you, you don't have a history of your family having gotten cancer, uh, we should take it initiative to ensure that the, the county government uh, put all those machines in the, in the, in the level four and five, and uh, the doctors keep on reminding people and uh, when they look at the record and they see you've taken a year before doing the, the test, they, they, they have to keep on telling people that you need to do in every year. Like the way we do the other disease on how uh, we need to do the prevention. We should also take cancer as one of those uh, uh, things that we need to market as a government and ensure that we... We, 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 I mean, we ensure that people understand that they need to do this prevention and control. Because we can pass a bill, but if the people are not aware, it will not help. And then, of course, uh, the, the, when it comes to our hospitals, to ensure that uh, we have the right equipment in our hospitals, especially in the county government, in our county governments, to ensure that we have the right hospitals. And uh, if you look at the other part, the developed world, you'll see where everybody maybe is going. They are going to look for medical, medical support from uh, abroad. The, those are the developed world. You'll see it's that they've taken care of the hospitals. Uh, if you go to London, you go to India, you go to America, that's where they've taken care of their hospitals. So even us, we should do the same. The 47 counties should ensure that we have the right hospitals, the right doctors that are, that are able to treat our people. So that when you're talking of pre prevention and uh, control of our cancer, uh, of cancer, we already are equipped from the county government to the national government. But we cannot just be talking and yet we are telling our people prevention and we don't have the right uh, things we put in place to ensure that this prevention and control is taken care of. And of course encourage uh, private investors to put uh, uh, hospitals because I know with the support of the government and uh, the county government and the, uh, the private uh, investors, if they put the right hospitals with the right equipment, we will do this prevention and control at an early stage. And then, of course, we as uh, brothers and sisters, we become the brother's keeper. Uh, you become your brother's keeper to ensure that uh, whatever you do, you, you do it uh, as you would want it to be done to you. I'm talking this when you are a farmer, in there in the farm. You know very well that uh, what you need, uh, the, the steps that you need to take to, to ensure that the food that you are pesticizing, that it doesn't go to the market before the, the, the time given, it is uh, complete. Because I've seen even uh, cows, you can see somebody has injected a cow and uh, they know very well this cow should not be eaten. But because they can see it, so it has no, it's not in this taken to the butcher. I remember, and I keep on saying, 
even for people to be alive is just, I think, by God. Because I know there is a time that in, during our times you could see uh, an animal is not feeling well, but the, the farmer doesn't want to waste that animal. He will take it to the butchery and people will have that meat. So I think become the brother's keeper so that whatever you do, you are doing it as you'd want it to be done to you. Because for you, when you knock the shop, you don't know what was put there in the shop, whether it is the, it has met the standard. But you only buy, believing, because it has the diamond mark or it has, the, it has been put in that shop. So meaning, if everybody took care and uh, did this uh, prevention and control, as you'd want done to you, I think we'll achieve I mean, we'll achieve somewhere and we'll ensure that cancer uh, diseases are controlled in a way that other parts of the world are doing so that we don't keep on seeing our brothers, our neighbors, our families dying on things that should be prevented. I know uh, people have suffered and as I think Cherengai put it, any time we are going to those uh, back to the villages to our homes, the things that you find there is just harambees to support these families, to, 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 to ensure that they can, uh, I mean, get uh, medical uh, support. But I also, maybe the government, can they put up a kitty that can also support to ensure that people uh, don't have to go through, uh, especially the, the people who have no, uh, I mean, uh, uh, jobs, but I'm happy that, do, that this uh, UH, whatever that the doctor has come up with, I think it will help a lot to ensure that the, the way the government came with a bill and uh, we passed it here, that now the, the, those uh, diseases that are, that are, what are they called, terminal, the terminal diseases, the terminal illness, that now the doctor will, I mean the government has put uh, an, an insurance that will ensure that uh, those people will get the medical support when they go to the hospitals. But the main thing, I think, is to prevent so that we don't get to our people suffering. Because even if you get those uh, kitty, as the uh, senator of uh, Tanaliba is saying, the way he saw his dad is suffering, even if he was given those free medical, whatever, if there was something that could have done to prevent him not to get to that disease, I think this is the main thing. And mine is, everybody does what is supposed to be done from the national government, the county government, and we as the public to ensure that we prevent these diseases, uh, this cancer, and we control it like other part of the world the way they are doing. Because I know the developed world have achieved a, po a place where they've seen their people are not suffering like the way Africa is. So it's our time now to take, uh, to take measures to ensure that we prevent and control the cancer. And I think with that, we'll see our families, our members, the public not suffering. We've gone through this uh, suffering. Because when a member is suffering, I think all people suffer. If it's a parent, if it's a brother, if it's a sister, if it's yourself, you, you suffer together. So I think when we do this pre uh, control and uh, the prevention and control, it will ease us. And even it, 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 it demoralizes people from moving forward. Why? Because when you see a suffering dad, a suffering mother, it gives you that uh, as if it's the end of the world and then you start questioning a lot of things that you question. So I think for a healthy nation, for a healthy uh, generations, we need to ensure that we prevent this and uh, control the cancer diseases. And uh, you support this bill, and I think this is one of the bills that we should all come up and support it to ensure that our people will continue living uh, healthy and ensure that they don't go through the suffering of a cancer that the way we've seen. And our hospitals, when they are equipped and they, are, they have uh, early diagnostic, will ensure the first step is to ensure we prevent through our hospitals 
and through on what we eat and what we drink. I think with this, I say thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, and I give the opportunity maybe to the last person. Thank you. Uh, Senator Tabitha, it is the prerogative of the chair to say who speaks last and who... Uh, Senator Crystal Asige. Thank you very much, Speaker, for um, giving me the opportunity. The last shall be first, they say, Speaker, and I appreciate that um, even though I am last uh, to speak on this very important amendment, um, that my suggestions and my thoughts Senator will still be Christo, on record. There are still members of the House who want to speak to this bill, so you are actually oh, good. not the last. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, thank you, Speaker. I rise to support this amendment to the Cancer Prevention and Control Bill. Speaker, this is not a bill that is new. The Act is already in place, and all that we are debating here this evening is this amendment that has been put forth in front of the House. Speaker, it's very important, and I think that it's vital, actually, that the bill is seeking to align itself with digital and technological advancements in the health sector, as well as other sectors, seeing the boom in the digital industry across the world. And Speaker, um, adding tele telemedicine as well as e-health to this bill will absolutely um, be able to reach more people who are fighting cancer, who have cancer in their family, and who need the support that um, cancer medication and treatment um, will, will provide them wherever they are in the country. Mr. Speaker, it's something that I've been talking about for very, very long, since I have begun my advocacy in my work in disability in this sector. Um, I've always spoken about the in importance of digital technology and digital accessibility to support persons who are vulnerable. Of course, my work primarily focuses on people with disabilities, but we are seeing more and more as we continue debating, as we continue um, to see uh, innovations growing in our country and abroad, that the digital space will be the solution to so many of our problems. So many of the things that um, uh, plague us as human beings, there is a solution that lies in the digital uh, space. And this is one of them, Speaker. Being able to reach rural areas, um, cancer treatment, cancer doctors, cancer uh, interventions, being, being able to reach rural areas and people who are across uh, Kenya will absolutely change the game in terms of early intervention and management of cancer um, conditions and hopefully reversal so that uh, more people in Kenya can go through remission. We can, we can be celebrating more cases of remission in the future. Speaker, I this week even just um, met somebody. Uh, he is, his name is Martin Imbalambala. Now, Many people might know him, many people might not know him, but Martin Mbalambala is a former captain of FC Leopards, and he's played for the team for seven years. Unfortunately, in 2018, he had a sports injury that uh, gave him a disability, and that vis disability is visual. He is now completely blind, like myself, a VIP, and he has been trying to figure out how to rehabilitate himself, how to bring his life back to somewhat of, um, of control, or to his control, that is, Speaker. And as I've been speaking with uh, Martin Imbalambala and, uh, you know, cons consoling with him and, and uh, having meetings and conversations with him and his wife and his family, Speaker, we realized that uh, digital access and being able to rehabilitate himself through the tech space and tech innovations and accessible devices and so on and so forth has been the solution for him. Speaker, he has gone to Kent Society for the Blind. He has taken courses in Braille. He has taken courses in computer science and tech. He has taken courses in how to use his smartphone with a screen reader like my own that I use here in Parliament 
And now, Speaker, he is in a much better place, not just as the breadwinner of the house, not just as a man who is supposed to be a protector, provider, but also as a father of his children. He has now gained back his confidence because of digital innovations and um, the, the, the device that he's been able to gain. And I'm happy that I've been able to support him in his journey to give him softwares on his laptop that will continue to help him uh, reach a level that um, is not quite cl the same as where he used to be when he had his full sight, but it's close enough. And it's as close as it, it could maybe get to him um, taking control back of his life, Mr. Speaker. The reason I give this story, Speaker, is because I am underscoring the importance of the internet. I am underscoring the importance of technology and assistive devices. And not just in the case of persons with disabilities, but everyone is now seeing the same. And these amendments to the bill that we're discussing here will also prove uh, to be as beneficial to non-disabled people seeking help, treatment, medication, as well as um, uh, disabled people in the country. Speaker, also it's important to understand that cancer, even though it's said to be genetic and somebody in your uh, lineage must have it or must have had it for it to um, exist or manifest in yourself, but speaker, to be quite honest, we are discovering every single day that medicine and our medical doctors and professionals may not know everything about these very um, complex conditions and complex diseases. Mr. Speaker, every single day as human beings, we're discovering one more thing. We are discovering that we, we don't know what we don't know. We only can move in a direction that we pick up small pieces of the puzzle and try and figure out in the interventions um, uh, through, through, uh, through, through uh, research and um, experimentation, etc. So even though right now we are told that cancer is genetic and um, you have to have had it somewhere in your family, speaker, we also know and they tell us that cancer can also be um, can also come from lifestyle. It can also come from the foods that we eat. It can also come from trauma, we are, we are told, and um, different types of psychological challenges uh, that maybe stem from birth or stem from you as, a young, uh, you as a young person or in your young age. And I just wanted to double down on the matter of, of food, speak, speaker. Because for me, I think that um, it's really fascinating to think about Kenya and how it, we could transform our approach to food and health. Instead of imposing health, um, VAT on um, things like bread of 16%, we could dive into sustainable agricultural practices, Speaker. We can take a leaf from the US Farm Bill of 2023 focusing on sustainable farming to empower local farmers and ramp up the production of healthier food choices, Speaker. This isn't just about money. It's about getting to the core of health problems like cancer. By pushing for fresh, nutrient-packed foods, Speaker, rather than processed junk, communities could tackle a whole host of health issues tied to cancer, diet, weight problems, lack of exercise, insulin problems, and other genetic uh, conditions that come along. And shifting our resources from old school farming to programs backing sustainable practices and teaching about nutrition speaker could be a game changer in dealing with health and environmental hurdles that we're seeing. It's heartening to see this global shift in mindset that recognizes how vit um, food systems is important to looking after human and our well-being and our health. And I just wish that we would also take um, a step further and not just look at cancer prevention in terms of uh, what we can do with medicine, but what can we do with improving our health systems? What can we do with improving our health habits? What laws can this uh, parliament and this house uh, be able to think of and, and put forth as proposals to improve uh, our lifestyle choices, Mr. Speaker? Because we're here as leaders. We're here because we have knowledge, we're here because we have connections, we're here because we can you know, go and benchmark in different countries and, and come back with solutions that don't always have to 
you know, come about at stage three or stage four? What if we don't even have to get to stage one of cancer by really going to the root and looking at our lifestyles and looking at the, the, the foods that we're allowing to be imported into the country, to be put on our shelves, to be fed to our children, Mr. Speaker. It's very often that you see parents just give their child your sweets, give their child processed foods, processed meats, uh, processed whole grains, and, and think or believe because of maybe lack of education or poor education that uh, this is good for my child. At least, so long as my child is, has a full belly, then uh, he or she will be fine. But what are you doing to that child when they're two years old, when they're three years old? Um, and what kind of future are you giving them by feeding them what you're feeding them today? We need to think in those kinds of terms, Speaker, so that we don't even have to get to stage, like I said, one or two or three of cancer cases. Mr. Speaker, I also wanted to, um, you know, talk about how this bill would be really well placed if it also went vis-a-vis uh, digital skills training. We need digital skills training. It's all well and good to say that we are going to introduce telemedicine and we're also going to introduce e-health systems when most of our country does not have digital uh, skills. They don't know how to use smartphones to the best of their ability. They don't know how to use laptops, Mr. Speaker. How do you access the internet and make the most out of it apart from just going on social media and TikTok? Mr. Speaker, we also need to think about how are we going to train our people to be able to use um, the online services that we are seeking to uh, provide within this cancer prevention and control bill. Because it could be there, but, if, but as they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. So you need, we need to understand how are we going to um, uh, have digital skills piggyback these amendments that we're talking about today, Speaker. Also, we need to talk about affordability and accessibility of the internet. That's the next part of this equation for me. How are we as a parliament, how is the government thinking about how to make the internet more accessible? Because these people, patients, cancer patients, um, people who have any kind of sickness, to be honest, even people with disabilities, will need a way to access the internet. They will need to, a way to have affordability of the internet. Otherwise, this is just a, a nice piece of legislation that, you know, we'll pass here, it'll be signed into law, and then will not actually be useful on the ground. So what are we doing to reduce costs of data, to reduce the cost of internet accessibility, um, to reduce the cost of mobile phones, speaker, to reduce the cost of apps, because many apps you have to buy, even the telemedicine companies um, that we have here today that we, some of us use, you have to download them, and there's a fee for that. Sometimes there's a monthly fee for that. How are you going to expect somebody in Tana River County um, who has just <laughs> lost everything, everything that they have worked and lived for in the floods, how is he or she supposed to be able to afford a subscription of 1,000 shillings for a, for a telemedicine uh, app so that they can you know, manage their cancer condition? It's questions like these that we need to think about holistically. It's well to come with one amendment, but you have to think of it as a domino effect. There is a pathway to any solution, and we need to look at every single stage of that solution and not just jump from point A to point Z and say, ah, we have the answer. This is a good bill. Kenya is ahead. When you haven't thought about all of the parts of the puzzle in the middle of, of that solution. Chair, Speaker, I wish that um, we also, just uh, as uh, moving forward as parliamentarians, as senators in this house, um, distinguished colleagues of mine, we need to start thinking about things that are outside of medicine. We need to start thinking about things that are regarding well-being and mental health, um, because that also goes hand in hand with cancer. If, you're not, if you don't have a healthy mind, many people, many doctors will tell you that going through chemo, you need to have a strong will. You need to have a strong mind to be able to go um, through session after session of chemotherapy. You need to have it. And Mr. Speaker, I don't want us to get to a place like with social media, 
where a beautiful intervention has come. Social media is fantastic. It connects people. It, we are able to speak, communicate, um, do so much more through the internet and through social media. But the other side of that coin is that we are now seeing higher levels of loneliness in our communities. We are now seeing higher levels of isolation because people think because I'm on the internet, uh, I'm okay. But really, the people who are behind those telephones, the people who are behind those mobiles, behind the Senator laptop. Senator Crystal, you still have got five minutes of your time to conclude. Thank you. Speaker, people who are behind the laptop, they're not okay. We cannot assume that just because I see you update your WhatsApp status or your um, Instagram reels that, aha, Senator Cherage is fine today. But we have to also think about how to connect human being to human being. And I am just worried or concerned that if we focus on e-health and telemedicine alone, that we will just rely fully on that. We will just rely fully on a, a doctor seeing a patient virtually and diagnosing them through a screen, through the speaker of the phone, and that's it. And then forget that a human touch is absolutely necessary. It's vital in, um, in recovery, in management of any condition, so that um, we don't forget, we do not adopt one and then forget the other. Mr. Speaker, they have to go hand in hand. So even as we uh, stand to support this bill, we need uh, this amendment in the bill, excuse me. We also need to figure out um, how to ring fence these cancer patients and not just say, because we have the internet, problems will be easier to solve. We have to say they'll be easier to solve, but also how do we keep the human connection that is extremely vital between patient and doctor. So even if it is a case of being treated or being seen online virtually through e-health, through telemedicine, we also need to make sure that um, there, is, uh, there are also sessions that will be done in person. We should not lose that um, uh, walk-in uh, the, the walk-in um, mechanism into hospitals or clinics and so on and so forth, even as we do support the amendment to the Cancer Prevention and Control Bill. Mr. Speaker, I submit. Senator Chirurgay, how much time do you need to conclude your reply? Senator Chirurgay? You may proceed to reply. So, Speaker, a lot has been said, and I want to thank uh, colleagues for the wonderful contribution to this Cancer Prevention Amendment Bill uh, that we have been able to debate today. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to thank all the senators. Uh, and the conclusion has been done by the gracious lady, Senator Crystal Lasige, Senator Tabita Mutinda the Seconder, Senator Tabita Karanja Keroche. And you know, weekend is approaching. I hope he, she has prepared something for us as the acting majority leader. Senator, of course, my brother, senior brother, Senator Danson Mugatana, Mula Mwamba, Mula Mamba, sorry, and many others, Mr. Speaker. I know you would have contributed, but because of your unique position, Mr. Speaker, would be uh, very in order. So I think cancer, we agree, it's a serious disease. We must be ready to tackle it through legislation, through allocation of resources. I want finally, Mr. Speaker, to call upon any member who has further amendments to uh, ensure uh, they bring it up so that in the third reading and committee of the all, Mr. Speaker, they can bring their amendments, Mr. Speaker. With those very many remarks,
And I want Mr. Speaker in conclusion to empathize and sympathize to many victims of cancer. We call you heroes. To many victims, people who have loved their loved ones, we empathize with you, we pray for you, and we are doing everything we can to fight the menace of cancer that continues not only to kill our people, but also deforish and flourish uh, and, and the speaker and uh, make, uh, make them lose their, their, their property and wealth. But we pray with you and we support and we wish you well. Mr. Speaker, I raise uh, in that same breath a uh, standing order 63, uh, 66 3. I request that uh, this, the putting of question, be deferred to a later date for division. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I beg to reply. Thank you, Honorable uh, Charge, and uh, pass on to the provisions of Standing Order 66. The request is granted, and putting of the question will be when the House resumes. Honorable Senators, it's now 6.30 p.m.